The Carl Nelson Show. And good morning, Wake Up Squad. We hope you had a great weekend later. Egyptologist Tony Browder presents uh, his old preview, actually, his upcoming conference in Ghana scheduled for next week. Brother Tony's being is going to be installed as a chief and his daughter Atlantis as a queen, a queen mother, I should say. Before we hear from Brother Tony, though, Dr. Kemet Shockley will dissect Queen Elizabeth's reign and its effect on the former colonies. But to get us started, activists Kim Poole and Elder Carly are here talking about their upcoming trip to Kenya. Uh, good morning, Kim. Good morning, Elder, uh, Elder Carly. We are excellent, <laughs> excellent. So let me start with Kim first. Kim, can you tell us about what this trip to uh, Kenya is all about? Conference on Art for Social Transformation, Artisan 2022. And we're excited, Carl. Um, we connect artists and art culture to sustainable development. And for us, uh, we only go to regions where we're invited. Last year was South Africa, and many of our participants were Kenyan. And they said, Kim, next year we need to do this conference in Kenya um, on the landscape of their election, which was recently resolved. Dr. William Ruto um, was uh, confirmed by the Supreme Court, they said that art, um, in many ways, it helps the people um, use their expression in healthy ways. And so, in addition to that, they understand the importance of peace building at a time like this. And so, Bonface uh, Betty, Betty, he works with the International Intercultural Peace Network. He invited us to be a part of what it means now post-election uh, to use art as a tool to build institutions in Kenya. And so we're willing to be a part of that conversation. We're bringing in international guests from across the world that are experts in their field. Elder Carly Town here with us this morning is one of them of the Gullah Geechee Nation. We have Dr. Beryl Beekman, the current uh, representative for the United Nations um, decade for people of African descent, which we just celebrated August 31st. She'll be coming from the Netherlands. She's a Surinamese woman and politician in the Netherlands, bringing a delegation of Surinamese artists and cultural practitioners to discuss the importance of policymaking for the artist class. We also have Bernard Morna out of Ghana, bringing in the West African influence, and he's going to talk about the importance of global African unity and solidarity. And then we have a surprise guest. Okay, I'm going to blow the surprise. We've invited Mr. P.L. Lumumba from out of Kenya to represent Kenya and talk to us about what it means for Kenya's future to continue to have global conversations and to use Kenya as an example of what art for social transformation could be. And so we're excited to help facilitate that discussion. And I'm so glad to be here with Dr. Carly Town this morning, uh, a demonstration in the diaspora of the power of art and culture in identity shaping and in community building. All right. And let's meet uh, Dr. Carly, Carly uh, Minister of Information for the Gullah Geechee Nation. You know, we have some folks out here probably that aren't familiar with the Gullah Geechee Nation. So, Elder Carly, can you help us out with those folks? Yes. Um, I'm so happy to be here. The Gullah Geechee are those enslaved Africans that was brought from Africa, stolen from Africa, and brought to the United States. And when they came, they brought all kinds of gifts and talents. Um, they said they brought them for to help um, with the rice, but we built a lot of the things that are now in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, the Geechee is the creolization of the language. It's act, actually adding English words to the language so that we could be able to communicate with the people on the mainland. But we've been able to retain uh, most of our traditions and our history and we have the highest retention of African tradition in America. If you came to the Gullah Geechee Nation, especially um, some parts of it, like Charleston, and you put a blindfold on and you go on a city bus, you would think that you're in Africa or in the Caribbean. 
So um, we are those people that have been here, and we stand on our strong will and self-determination. So I am so excited to be able to represent uh, the Gullah Geechee Angel Network, which is a nonprofit that preserve and promote Gullah culture by way of art. I'm also, I also work with Queen Quet, chiefess of the Gullah Geechee Nation, and she's been able to go all around to 50 states in the United States and also in other countries to tell people about who we are down here. So I'm here and I'm excited about Kenya. We're working on it. We have a meeting today. So I'm just really excited and I wanted to just, I don't know, I'm thinking about how this happened and it's so organic that we would be able to, to, to travel to the mother country and connect with our African traditions. And, you know, we could see some of the things that we're still doing here in Charleston are similar to those ones in Africa, like the sweetgrass basket. And you can find those in different parts of um, Kenya and um, West Africa. And if you came to Charleston, you would see these ladies and they would be making these baskets similar to, the, um, like I said, in Africa. So I right. know that art can transform because the sweetgrass basket was a tradition that they brought from Africa. And today they're still doing it and still being able to maintain that tradition. Six after the top of the hour. That's uh, uh, Elder Carly. Elder Carly, if, if we travel to the low country right now, go to Charleston, would we be able to figure out who's who's a part of the Gullah Geechee Nation and then who's just, you know, just the average Joe? No, 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 no. You wouldn't. You would be able to. You wouldn't know the difference because uh, we still hold on to our language. So you would have these, and we had these t- different tones than anybody else because we've been able to hold on to those things. Because when they, um, the Gullah, you find most of the Gullah Geechee people that are still doing the same things that they did when they left Africa. We still cook uh, what we call red rice. In Africa, it's jollof. It's the similarities there. You know, we still have those local foods that we eat that we brought from Africa. So you would know the people by just looking at them and hearing their voices that these are not just, you know, ordinary people they have a a tradition a culture we still have our uh, folklore dance what well, we call it a shout because if you cross your feet you'll be dancing but with the shout you don't cross your feet so you would you would know the difference and i'm quite sure when kim came a couple of months ago she saw the differences you know in our culture and how we've held on to most of it all right. Sister Kim, tell us about that trip, though, to, to the Gullah Geechee Nation. Uh, you know, what did you see? And did, did, were you able to figure out who's, who's part of the nation and who's not? You know, Carl, I have to say, um, maybe not what I saw, but what I tasted. Uh, food is my love language, and I was just fed the entire time. Uh, the spices mm-hmm. that they used, the way that they grew the food, the agriculture, um, being so connected to the land, being uh, from Baltimore, you know, I grew up in the big city and we're disconnected from the land. But being in low country uh, with the Gullah Geechee, they're still very, they never lost that connection. And so I, I think that it's evidenced in every facet of their life. And I I was able to connect with that through the food tasting, the okra stews and uh, them knowing from farm to table that process, um, the young people being a part of it. It was a communal effort. Um, I was taken to the cigar factory, um, and they told me about even their participation in the civil rights movement, uh, We Shall Overcome, and some of the musical traditions, um, how they use that music to keep their spirit resilient um, over each generation. And I think that that cultural continuum is still relevant today, and that is what is going to keep us connected as a community. That is what's going to remind us of who we are and reconnect us back to the source. Um, I think that me being there this past May, um, you know, Memorial Day was created in South Carolina. And so I, 
uh, saw those traditions still being preserved. And you ask yourself, why would Memorial Day be created and preserved in a region uh, of low country? Well, it's because they were able to retain their Africanity and honoring your ancestors, memorializing them as a tradition that we've always held dear. And here in the Ma'afa or in the separation from our identity, from our geographic location, from our language and food ways, uh, we didn't learn how to necessarily, or we didn't forget the importance of memorial. And in the Gullah Geechee Nation, it's so prevalent. It's so, um, it's so relevant to what happens today in their culture. And I was able to experience that during Memorial Day go into the grave sites where they've preserved their African ancestors' identities. And so, holistic experience indeed. All right, 10 after. And and Elder Carly, uh, the, the, the Gullah Geechis mm-hmm. that I've met, they sound like they're either from Jamaica or from Trinidad. Is that a fair observation? Is there a different sort of, a, a, a different dialect, if you will? It's a different dialect, but it does have similarities um, because um, some of the Gullah Geechis actually went to Trinidad when they left Canada. So we have discovered that and we found um, that there are those, like I said earlier, similarities. And we also went to different places because we went with the Seminoles and we became the black Seminoles. So we went to Florida, Texas, um, Oklahoma, and then Mexico, and also the Bahamas. So, yeah, the similarities are there because it is. We are all connected. Oh, wow. I just picked that up. But anyway, 11 after the top of the hour, uh, Sister Kim, uh, this conference in, in, in Kenya, uh, you, you're taking the Gullah Geechee Nation, of course, but who else is on this trip? So, again, it's truly international. Um, we choose four keynote speakers because our conference is four days long from November 4th through November 7th. On the first day, we always focus on the youth. And I think it's important to build intergenerational conversations. And so we'll have the most elder among us be the keynote speaker for day one on November 4th. And that would be, again, Dr. Beryl Beekman out of the Netherlands. She is the current representative of the international decade for people of African descent, uh, which uh, has now entered its ninth year, um, the United Nations decided that the transgressions against black people living in the diaspora needs to be acknowledged, that reparations need to be given. And she is a physical representation of that policy. And she'll be with us from the Netherlands and Europe um, by way of Suriname. Um, in South America. She'll be with us with a Syrian Amis delegation speaking on day one. On day two, we have P.L.O. Lumumba. He's an incredible, powerful man. Um, He is a native Kenyan and uh, a doctor um, of law. He's an attorney. He's teaching at Kenyatta University there, um, operating the Kenya Law School. And so he's been invited. We're excited to have him, um, as well as a host of other Kenyans that are professionals in their own right, experts already doing the work in Kenya. Um, I'm going to continue with the schedule, but I just want to pause to say we're not coming into Kenya to save Kenya. This is truly a partnership, co-creation, respect on both sides of what's happening uh, for the development of the conference. And we understand value on both sides. And so we want to celebrate that. We have a lot of Kenyan experts, Bond Face, Betty, um, again, with the inter um, international National Intercultural Peace Network, working across Kenya, Senegal, South Africa. Um, And so we'll talk a little about who some of those other experts are on the ground from Kenya. But PLO Lumumba is going to be speaking on day two at the university. On day three, we, of course, have Bernard Morna. Bernard Morna from West Ghana. He's from the upper West region of Ghana. So many people, they say, I've traveled to Ghana. I've been there. And what they've been is on the triangle. You start the tour in Accra, then you go to Cape Coast and Almina to the Slave Dungeons. And if you're lucky, you'll make your way to Kumasi. But this chief, Bernard Morna, he's from the upper West. And the Upper West region is sacred, and we want the knowledge from this region because they're one of the areas of Ghana that weren't uh, that weren't defeated 
by the colonial uh, powers. They have a success story, Sankanu in Wachau, what they call Hippo City. And so the pride of the Ghanaians from this region, it sits differently because they fought the colonizers and they won. And so that kind of pride is what we need to teach um, in identity shaping to global Africans um, that not everybody lost on that front of colonization um, when, you know, the imperialistic entities came into the country. And so he's an example of that. And he'll speak on day three of our conference. Um, And then, of course, on our last day, bringing it home last, but certainly not least, we always use one day to focus on service. Art for social transformation is more than a conversation, and our conference is not just a convening space. We want to leave something of permanence. We want to conduct art for social transformation, demonstrate its effects on the ground during the conference before we leave. Our conference is just the beginning of the conversation, what we call a feasibility study, a moving field research. And at the end of the conference, we decide how can we work to support the conversations that took place at the conference for the next five Mm -hmm. years. We're not just talking about what we want to do. We're Mm -hmm. talking about long-term sustainable partnership and our international speakers like Elder Carly, they want to lead that vision. They're vested in making sure that the conversations that happen at the conference, the breakout sessions, the demonstration stations, the workshops, Mm -hmm. that they are part of a long-term plan and sustainability and partnership. And so on day four, Elder Carly is going to be our keynote speaker. We're talking to youth, college students, 60%, I talk about it all the time, of African people are young people below the age of 40. And this is our target population for day four. We're intentional about making sure that they're at the table, because if they're not, who are you actually talking to when 60% of all the people are below age 40? If they're not at the table, Mm -hmm. if they're not engaged, then you're talking to a world that no longer exists. And so we want to make sure that they are and they will be. Elder Carly is going to teach them the importance of our identity and importance of values and how holding on to them is what's going to be vibrant, what's going to be the lifeline of your people. And the Gullah Geechee Nation yeah. is an example of that. Hold that thought right there, uh, uh, Sister King. We've got to take a short break. Uh, our first look at the traffic and weather in our different cities. Folks, you want to join this conversation, Sister Kim and Elder Carly, reach out to us at 800-450-7876. We'll take your calls in four minutes on 1010 WOLB in Baltimore. If you're in the DMV, we're on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. Good morning again, family. 23 minutes after the top of the hour with our guest, the Baltimore activist Kim Poole, and also uh, Elder Carly, who's uh, from the Gullah Geechee Nation. They're both on their way to Kenya. And one of the persons at the event that they're going to speak is going to be P.L.O. Lumumba. They mentioned that name. If you're unfamiliar with that name, please Google P.L.O. Lumumba. He's going to be one of the speakers because that's one of the persons that you need to know. Uh, I want to go back to Elder Carly, though. Elder Carly, you're making this, this connection at a time when people try to break up Africans in this part of the continent, Africans on the continent. And then you've got Africans in in, in uh, the low country or a, a subset as well. So you, the, trying to link up all these combination, in, combinations of our, of our diaspora, our, our people. How important is it for you to make these connections? It's very important for me to make the connection because we are all one people. And I think that we have... Uh, we have things that we can contribute to Africa, and Africa has things that they can contribute to us. And with us getting to the table and sitting down and talking about those things and putting action into it, I think that we can create a better uh, world for our people and for humanity, really. So I really believe that we do better, much better when we unify. So I feel that because um, I've always believed that art is a way to unify people. I believe that going to Africa as an artist myself, because I do performing arts, uh, musical plays and poetry and storytelling, and all of that comes from Africa. So I want to show that link. And also I want young people to know that we have these things and we can create from it. And that's what we're doing here in Charleston. I mean, in the Gullah Geechee Nation. I'm speaking into the children, to the youth, 
that whatever you got, you can create from it and you can make it, you can make money from it to help pay the taxes because that's one of the things that always come up right about now because of gentrification. So I believe that, you know, sitting down in Africa, talking to those young people and other people, we can find more ways to be able to make sure that we are sustainable as a people. Yeah, 25 after the top. Yeah, and, and Carly got a tweet question. Tweeter wanted to know what areas in, in America constitute Gullah Geechee. And I'll just add, is it just yeah. in, in the U.S., the uh, Gullah Geechee's or, or, or the other parts of the diaspora? They're part of the diaspora. You know, the, the great migration, a lot of people went north, too. You know, they went to New York and stuff. So we have Gullah Geechee's all over. Um, All right. The 26 after the top there. Uh, Sister Kim, what, what is the aim of this conference? What, what, are you, what are you trying to achieve at this conference? Ultimately, we want to connect artists and art culture to sustainable development. And so what does that mean? That means that we understand the importance of bringing artists to decision-making tables, traditional artists, the singers, mm-hmm. the dancers, the poets, the visual artists. We want them mm-hmm. in the board of estimates. We want them as the artists in residence and governments. And so when yeah. we start to blend these sectors, what we do is we give other people to be as creative as the artist class. We remind them that you too are an artist. The moment that you're innovative, mm-hmm. engage in, in design thinking, the moment that you understand that creativity is a part of all of us, then you now better mm-hmm. influence your own sector. So the healthcare sectors, they need artists and residents. We need artists business leaders that create and think with the creativity of the artist class, artists in government for civic engagement to be the bullhorn Mm -hmm. of truth for the people. We need artists to do that. And so it's about intersectional development, intergenerational connecting the haves Mm -hmm. and the have nots, you know, bringing us to a round table discussion so that we can imagine a better future for all of us. Like Elder Carly said, for humanity, black people, we are the first and original human beings. And when we're in our proper places, when artists are sustainable, the griots in our communities, they weren't just storytellers. They held the history of the village. They were libraries Mm -hmm. and griots ate well. They had housing. They were sustained. The drummers, we took care of our drummers. They were our communication Mm -hmm. systems. And so our societies need to use the African worldview on artists' roles in societal development so that we can find balance. Artists are not just art for art's sake. It's not something we do in that museum building over there, away from the people. Art is everybody. And our conference, it reminds us of that. It's intentional. So that's what we're doing November 4th through 7th. And we still have space at the table. It's not too late. If you're an expert out there and you're interested in using the artistic lens to analyze solutions in our community, then please join us. Let us know where you are and who you are. If you just want to attend and, you know, be in the audience, we need your energy too. That vibration matters. We understand the importance of the face-to-face, and that's why we're getting on planes and going over there. Technology has helped us. During COVID, we appreciated it. But there's nothing like the vibration of a face-to-face. So get on the plane and come with us. We're doing a tour after the conference for those that have never been to Kenya. Our conference is November 4th through the 7th. But if you're interested in staying a little longer and you've never been to Kenya, we're going to show you across the entire country, the Great Valley Rift, where people first began. In Kenya, we're going to show you Mombasa and Malindi, where they still make their own hand-woven fabrics and so much more. So, you know, contact us, facebook.com slash teaching artists, one word. We want you with us. And if you just can't come this time, that's okay. We do still have virtual registration, and we can tell you about that, too. Uh, Thank you, Carl, again for the opportunity. Our conference is committed to connecting artists and art culture to sustainable development. All right, 30 minutes after the top of the hour. Sister Kim, what did you say for folks in Baltimore? Says, so why can't we do it in our city? Why do we have to go all the way uh, across the ocean? What do you say to those folks? <laughs> well, listen, we only go where we're invited. And you know, Carl, I'm a Christian, and Jesus said I'll never be a king in my own house. Well, Baltimore, you know what it is. I'm still waiting for my invitation <laughs> letter. So when Baltimore invites me, I'll be right here at home doing the conference. All right. Okay, Baltimore, it's on you now. Uh, uh, Elder Carly, uh, the Gullah Geechee Nation, uh, 
uh, you know, for most folks, many people in this country don't even know about the Gullah Geechee Nation. What, what do you expect? Uh, what kind of reaction do you think you're going to get from uh, our brothers and sisters in Kenya? I think that we will get great reactions because they will understand that we do, we have retained our Africanism in America. And like I said, we have the highest retention. And I think, you know, when I went to Tanzania, um, people, I, people just, I felt the people and they felt me. So when I, when I get there and when our delegation gets there, they will feel the vibration. It's different. I always say the Gullah Geechis have a code of spirit. So you know, they'll know that we are a little, you know, we have retained our Africanism. Is there a move to get the Gullah uh, Geechee Nation recognized as a nation? So, say at the UN, yeah. is there a move afoot? We have been recognized, uh, and I'll, we could talk about that at another time. But we have Queen Quet has gone to the United Nation in 1999. She was the first Gullah Geechee to speak at the United Nation, and we've gone back and forth about human rights and other issues at the right. UN. Uh, we went to uh, 20, uh, Switzerland. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to tell the folks about timers. You know, we got to keep them uh, updated on the timers okay. through the morning. <laughs> it's 29 away from the top of the hour, folks. Uh, I, I guess you just heard there was uh, uh, Sister Elder Carly along with Kim Poole. They're going to Kenya uh, for a big conference in, in Kenya. And, and, and Kim, I'm going to ask you this. How does the Teaching and Art Institute work with artists all over Africa, not just in Kenya? How does that work? Well, you know, uh, Carl, we've been doing this work for seven years now, and ironically, we also work in seven countries. It's the art that connect us. Um, you know, art is a universal language, and geographic boundaries don't keep us separated. We respect each other as artists first, and then after the respect of the art form, we then decide that we want to build sustainable institutions to maintain our value system. And so mm -hmm. we've been doing that. We began our work in Ghana, like so many other great things that came first on the continent, um, from Ghana into the Gambia, from the Gambia into Uganda, where some of our greatest curators come, like Mugisha Allen from uh, Uganda into Tanzania, and then back west to Liberia, where my ancestors come from, and then in Jamaica with Nanny Town and the Maroons, and of course in the U.S. You can't help other places if you ain't help home. So we're working in Baltimore and Ohio and North Carolina, and so we're really excited to maintain the network, and that is the strength of us. The human resource is the greatest resource, and it is in our connection that we're able mm -hmm. to mobilize. All right, 27 away from the top. I'll we'll come up my break real soon, but briefly tell us, is it still, can folks who want to join you on this trip to, to Kenya, can they still get on board? Yes, please come. Let us know. Again, yeah, yeah. facebook.com slash teaching artists, one word. And of course, Carl, you know they can call me directly. This is the phone by the bed, myself, 443 mm -hmm. 739 Again, that's 443 Seven three nine zero nine four one. I believe in accessibility. Please call me, text me. That is my personal number. Find us on Facebook. Please follow us. We're not good with that. Follow us on Facebook. Share our page. Follow the journey. Um, you know, seven years, we have a long way to go. But I tell you, seven is a divine number. And I feel that we've earned the right now to say that we do this work after seven years of consistency across seven countries. Um, you know, we. And so we're excited for you to join us, be a part of the movement. Contact me if you want to go with us to Kenya or any of the places that we're headed around the world. In October, we're back in Tanzania for Love Camp, Black Love Matters. Shout out to Renee Miller, our curator. In December, we're in Ghana, Root Rise, Remember. I was invited to perform at the presidential ball. We, When we go to these places, we're working with the local community. We're not tourists. We've been working there consistently with that network of uh, teaching artists for seven years now. They see us as family. We're not just there when you come on a tour. We're working in the country all year long, and so they don't treat us as tourists. We're invited to events that even the local people don't have an opportunity to attend, like the presidential ball. You can't just show up and pay for your ticket. You have to be invited. And so these are the kind of events mm -hmm. that we're invited to, and we can extend that invitation to you. So please contact us on Facebook if you're interested in working on the continent. 
All right, we got to take a short break. 25 away from the top of the hour. We got to check our first look at the news, uh, weather, and traffic in, in our different cities. Folks, you want to join this conversation? I guess you just heard that was Kim Poole out of Baltimore. And also, uh, Elder Carly's with us from the Gullah Geechee Nation. Reach out to us and we'll take your phone calls in four minutes on 1010 WOLB in Baltimore. And if you're in the DMV, you're on FM 95.9 and 1450. WOL, where information is power. And good morning again, family. 19 minutes away from the top of the hour. Just waking up with us, we have a Baltimore actors, Kim Poole, and also uh, Helder Carly from the Gullah Geechee Nation is also with us. They're on their way to Kenya. We're going to talk more about that trip. Before we do that, though, let me just remind you later on, uh, chemitologist Tony Browder will be here. Tony is on his way to Ghana. Actually, he's going to be installed as a chief. We're going to hear about that and also the conferences he's going to be speaking at, at Cape Coast. And before we get to Brother Tony, though, Dr. Kemet Shockley will, will gonna, is going to dissect Queen Elizabeth's reign and its effect on the former colonies. So we'll get some, a lot of information information coming up later this morning and later this week uh, doctor of clinical psychology dr jeff menzies will join us and metaphysician dr b will also be here so if you're in baltimore keep your radio locked on 10 10 wolb if you're in dc keep your radio right here on 95.9 fm and also 1450 am wol so let's, let's go back to uh, uh sister kim and also elder carly El- elder carly you you made a mention that you want to reach some of the young people, which is great because I, as you mentioned, that's that's the future. So far, on uh, you've probably yeah. been working with young people. What is what has been the reaction of the young people that you have been working with so far in, in the Low Country? Well, it's, um, there is a a thrust for understanding more about who they are since we started working more in the community, and so most of the young people now are are really grasping the fact that they are Gullah Geechee and that they appreciate it and they see the value. And they also are becoming more aware of the fact that this is a way that they can actually teach. Some of them are young adults that have children, so they are teaching their children about the culture. And we are having different uh, schools and places like daycare that would send the children out to people like myself and others. And Queen Quet would go to different schools and talk to them about the culture and let them know that, you know, we are just, we are the Gullah Geechees and we are from, you know, most of us came from West Africa, from Santa Gambia, all the way down to Angola. But then we are also a part of the other part of the diaspora of Africa too, because, you know, we were nomadic people. So we came from all over. So they are really, it's a, it's almost like a Renaissance. It's like a, a Renaissance that people are really proud to be, especially the young people, proud to be Gullah Geechee. And now that they understand that it is, is that we do have a language, that we do have a culture, and that, you know, we are, we've, we've, hold, we've held on to that culture. So with us being the elders and telling them about the culture and telling them about our ancestors and how they have held on to the land, they are really, really excited about being who they are. And so I am so I'm honored to be here to say that because I've seen we've been working and doing this over 30 years, and now I see the fruits of the labor. But I also wanted to say I'm proud to know that people like Kim at TAI has become a part of our growing and it's expanding our territory to places like Kenya. And I appreciate TAI, and I also appreciate you bringing us on. I just wanted to get that in. All right, and thank you for getting that in 16 away from the top. Now, let me go back to Sister Kim, though. What you just said about working with our young people. Sister Kim, do you think of a program like that would work in a city like Baltimore or Memphis or Chicago where so many of our youth seem to be on the wrong track? Absolutely. Identity shaping is what she's talking about, positive membership and belonging. We have an identity Mm -hmm. crisis in our community for young people. And the reason is because many of our elders have failed us. You know, Carl, I'm only 37 Mm -hmm. years old, so I still feel old. I feel like I've been working. I've been paying bills since 18. You know, they kicked us out the nest. We got started (laughs) early. But 
I still have a long way to go. And sometimes I feel like I'm starting from scratch. I look around and I'm like, where are the institutions that I can keep building? Where is that school that is dedicated where I can support? Why do we keep having to start over? And the reason I respect the Gullah Geechee Nation so much is like she said, we still have the land. We didn't lose it because we couldn't find the paperwork or we didn't lose it because we moved and we no longer valued being here on the land. And so I think that they are a shining example in the diaspora of what we need to continue to duplicate. So absolutely in Baltimore, we can bring them there and use them as that that template for other communities in the diaspora, how they can be proud of their history, proud and connected to institution building. That is the difference. Talking about our Mm -hmm. history, talking about who we are, and talking about why we should be proud of it is very different from talking about it and then pointing to the land where your people were, pointing to the food that it grows Mm -hmm. to provide you. Mm -hmm. I was down there in May, the okra that Rodney made stew with. That's his Mm -hmm. uncle's land. That's their land that's feeding Mm -hmm. them, that's protecting them and sustaining them when the pandemic happened they were okay that the market started to lose Mm. food on the shelves they would eat they would survive and i think they're teaching teaching survival the art of survival best practices and it is their culture that has sustained them and the fact that they give credit to their culture and identity as the source of their sustenance absolutely memphis baltimore you take them wherever the gully geechee are going to be that template that we need you're right. And 13 away from the top of the hour. Let me ask you this. So is there a possibility that we can get some of our young people to join you guys? Is there, do you think is there any way we can get somebody to come up and sponsor some of these young people to join you on this trip to Kenya? I mean, that's yes. what we need. Mm-hmm. We've been working our fingers to the bone in this society. And what do we have to show for it at the end? More bills. It's like the system is designed to make sure that you continually, perpetually stay in debt. The more money you get, the more bills you get. So invest in the young people. Plant a seed that's going to grow so that when you finish, you say, at least my money went to something good that one time. These people, they have Jordans, these young people. They've got video games, these young people, all kinds of TikTok phones that help them, you know. But these experiences, buy them an experience. These material goods are going to pass away, and they're fleeting. They want a new toy. They want a new phone. And every year they upgrade, and still they feel empty inside. All these friends on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram, they haven't seen real people in weeks. Help sponsor a young person to go. Let them get a real connection to something they'll never forget that's going to change their life. All right, 800-450-7876. Got a bunch of folks wanting to talk to you, and I apologize. My, one of my screens froze here, so I had to go to the other one. Let's see who's guys calling. Uh, first up on line three, Brother Haki's in Baltimore. Brother Haki, you're on with uh, Sister Kim and uh, Elder Carly. Yes, uh, and greetings, and thank you, Brother Carl. You have a powerful lineup uh, today, but it was ideally that you lead it off with our queens, if I may say, uh, but uh, thank you, uh, brothers and sisters of Haki Ami. Uh, I'm you. a board member, president for the Teaching Artists Institute. And, and Brother Carl, if I must say, if, if you ever need anyone to, to authenticate that, that we are Africans, continue to have the Minister of Information of Gullah Geechee Nation, <laughs> Elder Carly on. Because mm-hmm. I know some people, some people may not understand uh, where we uh, collectively come from. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, just just really edify, you know, just just in terms of what the Teaching Artists Institute uh, internationally is working on. And, and, and yes, we, we certainly have done some things here with the Civil Rights uh, Tour that many people were aware of. But, you know, we, mm-hmm. we need to be raising up some some Bob Marley's, some Sela, some Maria Makeba, uh, Brenda Fossey. You know, some different, you know, artists that are socially conscious and active uh, mm-hmm. and engaged to develop this, 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 this consciousness that we so need. The Bobby Wines that, that Kim actually is uh, out of Uganda. So we need to have these individuals as a movement. And one of the things that we're proud of now, just, you know, make it real quick, um, you know, with the Tanzania delegation that we took with us to South Africa last year. I mean, they have been to Dubai and to the United States, uh, you know, with, with the their, their president of Tanzania. Not that we go and try to, you know, be all, you know, hooked up with the presidents of these countries. But, you know, sometimes when you're doing certain work, 
you know, people be, should begin to recognize you. You may not get necessary recognition here, but, you, you know, it's appreciated, mm -hmm. uh, the work that we've done. And now this uh, Magamamoto group, the other Tanzania, is traveling all over uh, the world, actually, now, they're in Burundi now. So I just wanted to say this is not like, uh, you know, in the United States, sometimes our little bit of money can go very, very far over there to truly have a global impact. And so that, that's the vision that, that I'm setting out. So thank you both, and keep up the good work, Kim and Elder Kali. And thank you, Carl. Thank you so much, All right. Kim. Thank you. All right, nine away from the top of the hour. There was a question there, so we'll go to some more calls. 800-450-7876. Sister Fahim has joined us from D.C. Sister Fahim is on, uh, Sister Fahim is on line four. Sister Fahim, you're on with uh, Sister Kim and Elder Carly. Good morning to your guests and to you, Mr. Nelson. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, loud and clear. Yes, in the late 90s, and I think I've shared this story with you when Dr. Finch has been on. In the late 90s, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, Gullah Festival at Penn Center in Charleston, South Carolina. And the Gullah people are found mainly in the Carolinas, Florida, and Georgia. The sister is right. With the Great Migration, many have migrated to, throughout the U.S. In fact, uh, Clarence Thomas, who is from Pinpoint, Georgia, his people are uh, Gullah, and in fact, well, he may not have an African mind, but he is, uh, you know, he comes from that part of the country, and his people are, in fact, Gullah. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a documentary done um, called The Language We Cry In that directly mm -hmm. shows the connection between the Gullah Geechee people um, in uh, the Carolinas to Sierra Leone, the, the culture, the folklore, the basket weaving, etc. And so this group is not, you know, uh, uh, well, again, they are directly descendants. They've been connected particularly to Sierra Leone because the dialect is the same as the language that is used in Sierra Leone. And I was sharing that with one of my neighbors who is from Sierra Leone. Um, and so we clearly are one people. And that conference I went to in the 90s, late Dr. John Henry Clark was there. And it was bringing together with three forces, the late Mama Fatu Sek, who was a Marabou, and the Native American, and the traditional African, as well as those that practice the religion of hoodoo. They came together. Um, we actually, they wrote about us in the newspapers, actually. But those forces of nature came together. So could you um, have your guests talk a little bit more about how the Gullah Geechee people are located in the Carolinas and Georgia and Florida. Yes, they did migrate because I don't want people to think that they're, they're this tribe of people. Yes, they are a tribe of people, but this obscure nation of people that people have never heard of. All right. Thank you, uh, Sister Fahima. Ella Carly. Thank you so much. Yeah, as she said earlier, all the things she said had some um, presence here in the Gullah Geechee Nation. The Gullah Geechee Nation goes from Jacksonville, North Carolina, all the way to Jacksonville, Florida, and 30 to 35 miles inland, and including all of the islands. So, yes, and um, the fact that we came from West Africa, we understand that, yes, Sierra Leone has been spoken of as being one of the places, but there are many places in, Af in West Africa that we came from. You know, like I said, they, they forced us from Santa Gambia all the way down to Angola. So we can relate to some of those some of those countries uh, also. Um, right. And hold that thought right there, Elder Carly. We've got to take a short break here. So we've got to take another look okay. at the traffic okay. and weather and uh, stations need to identify themselves. I'll let you finish responding to Sister Fahima's question on the other side. Six okay. away from the top, hour, uh, top of the hour. We'll be back in four minutes right here on 1010 WOLB in Baltimore. Also in the DMV on FM 95.9 and AM 1450. WOL, where information is power. A minute after the top of the hour with our, our guest, uh, Sister Kim Poole. She's from Baltimore. And also Elder Carly uh, from the Gullah Geechee Nation discussing the upcoming trip they're going to take to Kenya. And they're taking a lot of people. And you can, we'll get more information. But I just want to remind you that Dr. Kim Shockley is on deck. We'll get to him momentarily. But uh, Elder Carly, I want you to finish responding to, to uh, uh, Sister Fahima's question before we left for the break. Just saying that, you know, we... I. She's correct. We came from parts of Sierra, from Sierra Leone, but also other places in Africa. 
like the word Angola. It, some say that the word Gola comes from Gullah comes from the word Gola, and that was the ang- from the Angolians that came. Matter of fact, when they came, um, we have had people to say that. When they came, they didn't want any more Angolians to come because they were strong will and self determined and they you know would make sure that they got their rights when they were here. So I agree with what she says, but there is other places besides Sierra Leone. And no, we are not just a tribe, we are Gullah Geechee Nation. But if somebody wants to find out more about the Gullah Geechee Nation, because we don't have the time right now, go to Gullah and you'll find out more information there. All right, two after the top of the hour, 800-450-7876. Mark's on line six. He's calling from Baltimore City. Mark, you're on with Elder Carly, just heard, and also Sister Kim. Yes, uh, hi, uh, hi, Mr. Nelson. Hi, Sister Kim, Elder Carly. Uh, here's a question. If people want to help out or assist in any way, maybe acting as chaperones on these trips to Kenya, or and or if they want to send a donation, uh, who do they send it to? Um, and I know finance these days are very important. And how much, and the other thing is, how much is a particular trip for these young people, for individuals? Do you have an estimated cost? Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so I can answer that. First and foremost, we don't like fees. We don't like GoFundMe pages. They take half the money that you get. So you won't find many GoFundMe uh, sites for us. But you can send it to us on Cash App. You're right in Baltimore with me. I can come pick up the check. Uh, Dollar sign, T-A-I-T-O-U-R-S. That's dollar sign Thai Tours. You can send it to us right now on Cash App. Um, we have Zelle. We try to transfer money to each other without having to pay other people to do it. So reach out to us on social media, and we'll make sure that if giving is what you want to do, we'll give you the opportunity to invest in the vision. If there's a specific young person that you want to see have these opportunities, please let us know. Registration for the conference is $1,350, um, certainly not a lot. It includes uh, the conference attendance as well as swag bags and the gala. It takes place on the evening of day two. If you're interested in attending the tour that takes place after the conference, that's $4,500, and it's all-inclusive. It includes your flight, and we'll fly you in early enough to attend the conference. And if you decide to attend the tour, we waive the conference registration fee. So that means you're attending the conference for free because we really want people to be there. And so let us know if you want to attend the conference and the tour, that's possible. That means you would be in Kenya from November 4th through November 16th. And if you're only interested in the tour, that means you would be there from November 8th through the 16th. So let us know. Again, facebook.com slash teaching artist. And you can always call me on my phone. Texting is always best. 443-739-0941. And Mark, we're excited that you want to participate. Your heart is in the right place. All right. Good deal, Mark. Th- th- thanks. That's a good question. Uh, and uh, hopefully we get some uh, more of our young people to go to Africa. Because I think once they go, they, right. you know, the your whole persona changes just by visiting Africa. Having said that, we're going to let you ladies go. Uh, Kim, Elder Carly, we're going to have you back to talk about the Gullah Geechis. But uh, thank you. And hopefully we'll we'll talk to you guys when you get back from Kenya. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, thanks again, Carl. Carl. All right, that's uh, Sister Kim Poole from Baltimore, also Elder Carly uh, from the Gullah Geechee Nation down in South Carolina. All right, as I mentioned, our next guest, and I'm coming up at five after the top of the hour, Dr. Kemet Shockley. Dr. Shockley, Hotep, welcome back to the program. Hotep, bye 